Welcome to School of the Spirit. I'm your teacher, Pastor Philip Nelms. You're invited to spend the next half hour with us where you'll be taught how to walk in victory by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God. Come and join us today as we continue our lesson. We pray that the Lord bless you with revelation and understanding from His Word. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to start tonight in the book of Luke, chapter 11, and verse 24. And this will be from the King James. So it's Luke 11, 24 to 26. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he comes, he finds it swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and takes to him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in, and they dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So tonight we're going to shift our focus to this topic of deliverance. We've been talking about spiritual warfare and deliverance, but up until now we've primarily talked about spiritual warfare. And if you recall, we liken spiritual warfare to living and maintaining a healthy lifestyle and you know keeping up strong defenses so that like you don't become sick like you eat well so you don't become sick or you keep your defenses up so that intruders can't come onto your property in other words it's more defensive whereas deliverance is more of an offensive weapon so we're going to go ahead and make that shift over to this discussion on deliverance We know that we live in this fallen world, and it has been utterly and completely touched by the effects of sin. There's nothing in this world that has not been touched by sin. So the earth is so fallen that eventually God is going to have to replace it with a new earth. And we humans who live in this corrupt, in this sin-soaked environment, We've also been touched by the corrupting influences of sin, and nobody will get off this planet untouched by the effects of sin. So whether that's our own sin, or it's the sin of others against us, or it's just the general sin and the curse in the earth, sin has touched everything and everyone on the earth. Would you all agree that that's a true statement? We're all equal in that regards, so there's no room for pride or, you know, any arrogance in this. The scripture says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So there's not a mature adult, you know, on this earth who could not benefit from undergoing some spiritual healing and deliverance counseling. Why? Because everyone has been touched by sin at some level some more and some less. And so it's with that admission and that sort of state of humility that we'll begin to talk about this. And this is the beginning to receiving spiritual healing and deliverance from that effect of sin. Now, we said back in our introductory lesson on this topic that when it comes to deliverance, we first want to make sure that the person is saved. The person needs the power of the blood of Jesus and the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit in order to break off strongholds and to stay free in the future. Now, that passage we just read indicates that you can be delivered and then you can end up worse off than you started. So we need to, we need to talk about that. We're going to break that down tonight. So Luke eleven twenty six warns us that if deliverance is not done the right way, then the person can end up worse off than when they started. All right, whatever house that that demon had built for themselves in that person, and they built that house in order to stay there, to protect themselves, to keep themselves from exposure and being evicted, okay? But the house that the demon built needs to be dismantled. His house needs to be torn down. Deliverance is for those who have been filled with Jesus, 
who's, who's saved, and who is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and they understand how to use and apply the power of the blood. And it is through those things that a demon or maybe multiple demons can be cast out. But then the person has got to have grace to maintain that freedom for the future. All right, so the title of tonight's teaching is simply Tearing Down the House. Tearing Down the House. So let's start with some basic information about, about demons and how they operate, what they are. Demons are disembodied spirits, okay, and not spirits of people. They're not people, but they are evil spiritual entities that have been separated from God. So there are fallen angels, and then there are other evil spirits that want to be able to express themselves and their evil personality through you because you have a body. They do not have bodies. So they are looking for one to live in. And to be in the earth legally and to express yourself in the earth legally, you need to have a body. And the reason is that the earth was given to man. The earth was given to mankind. Well, mankind is a three-part being. We are a spirit, and that spirit being will live eternally. It never dies. And that spirit also has a soul. And that soul is made up of our personality, of our mind, our emotions, our will. Okay, the spirit and the soul are not the same, but they are intertwined together. The scripture talks about the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, able to divide asunder even to soul and spirit. So it requires the word of the Lord to determine even what is soul and what is spirit because they are intertwined together. And so eternal beings that are body, soul, and spirit are known as mankind. And mankind has been given the earth, body, soul, and spirit. We operate in the earth. All right, without our bodies, we, now personally, we don't cease to exist, but since the earth was given to man, and man is those three parts, when the body dies, we are no longer legally able to stay here in the earth. So our spirit and our soul will leave together from this earth, and then we will go either to heaven to be with Jesus and with the Heavenly Father, or you are sent to be held as a prisoner of the adversary. There's only two places that you end up, okay? So there are no ghost people haunting the earth. When we die, we must leave, and we either go to be with our spiritual father, well, we, excuse, let me put it like this, we will go to be with our spiritual father, whoever that is, uh, whoever you chose to serve in the earth. All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says this, we're confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Okay, so when the body dies, you will immediately leave this earth and you will go to be with your Lord. So if you, if you accepted the free gift of salvation, you know, through Jesus, then you go to heaven to be with your good Father. And if you rejected that gift, then you will go to the only other place there is to go. If you don't know Jesus, you go to a place of torment that was not made for us, but it was created by God for the punishment and the judgment of Satan and his demons. And that will be our choice. That is not God's choice for us. That is a choice that we are making. God doesn't choose to send people to hell. We choose to go there by rejecting the only way to heaven. All right, so now when you see things like on television, like these ghost hunter shows, or you hear about hauntings in you know, certain properties and buildings or other supernatural activity like that in the earth, that's not dead people doing those things. Those are just demons. It's demonic activity. Now, you hear people talk about things like familiar spirits, okay? And familiar spirits are just demons that were here on the earth and they were living around people 
and they became familiar with those people. So demons don't die, people do. And so demons will often follow along in family lines. And so those demons can tell you information about dead people, people who, you know, were your ancestors or other people who have already gone. Okay. Or they can imitate those people, but they are not those people. They are not dead people. It does not work that way. Demons are liars and they are deceivers. And those demons who are without bodies, they desire to be able to enter, enter a body and to be able to express themselves that way in the earth. Okay, and that's why they roam about seeking whom they may devour, or you can say whom they may enter. And they need an open door from man. They need an open door from that person. They have to have legal permission to be able to enter that person. They can't just come in without some access. It has to be given to them. And so when a demon is attempting to enter a person, it's not usually all at once, but it's usually by a progressive series of events. Okay. And so what they do, they begin to hang around that person and they begin to try to influence that person. They begin to try to interject thoughts and lies into the person's mind or, or into the person's soul. Okay. And they, and they play on their emotions and they do that in order to begin to try to manipulate that person and to tempt that person into sin. And if the person, you know, takes the bait and, and they begin to open themselves up to that, by beginning to engage in the sin, the things that the demon is trying to tempt them into, then that spirit, as you begin to yield to what that thing is suggesting to you, it will begin to gain gradual access and authority over the person. So it starts with thoughts and, and interjecting thoughts from out here. And as you begin to yield to that, more and more, it begins to move in more into the mind and into that person. And it's a more of a gradual thing in most cases. It's usually little by little. It's not always that way. I'm going to talk about that exception. But normally, a demon will work this way over time. A demon has got to be a patient thing. It takes a while to work its way in. And so the more that a person yields to the evil spirit, okay, the more authority is being given over to that spirit. Until eventually, that spirit has worked its way into the person, and it begins to express itself through the personality of that person. And so that's why oftentimes we may notice what appears to be abrupt personality changes at times with people, or it seems abrupt, but you know it's something the enemy had been working at on them over time. You don't know what they were dealing with. But there came a point where they yielded and they yielded until that demon came in and began to express itself in that person. The spirit has now set up in them a stronghold. Okay, they're in the body and in the soul of the person. They're no longer out here speaking at them. They've now moved into the person. And the person is deceived. And usually they think that this is who they are. In other words, the demon's personality they think is really theirs. The way you can tell is when the demon is removed, you know, the personality of that individual will change as well, and they will go back to being who God created them to be. So no, you were not born that way. And no, God did not create you that way. He didn't create you to sin. But under the enemy's deception, you believe that this is who you are, okay? But that's not your personality. That's just the expression of the personality of the demon who is working through you. You weren't created for fits of rage, but if you have a demon of anger, that demon is prone to fits of rage. You are not programmed for gluttony, but a demon of gluttony will express itself through overeating, compulsive, and so on and so on. All right, so let's say that a young person, you know, begins to use drugs uh, and or begins to be, you know, sexually promiscuous. 
And then you begin to see a fairly significant change come over them in their personality. Okay, and it's always a change for the worse. It's never a change for the better. No one ever improves their personality through sin. It only goes one way, downhill. And this is because of the expression of that evil spirit's personality that is working through the body and the soul of the person. And so repeated unrepentant sins are very large open doors for evil spirits. All right, one of the most serious open doors is engaging in occult practices. That would be seances, tarot card readings, you know, Wicca practices, Ouija boards, you know, witchcraft practices, the shedding of innocent blood, you know, actually taking and, and sacrificing animals, and unfortunately, even humans many times in occultic type of practices. People who do that, they are demonized and overcome very quickly. Okay, that opens a massive door. And these spirits can cause, and they do cause, all kinds of physical, mental, and emotional torment. Okay, and when this happens to a person, if you are a spirit-filled Christian and you, you're aware of this, you have discernment that this is going on in someone, what you'll begin to notice is a darkness begins to manifest in the person. You begin to see it even in their eyes and in their complexion. Their mannerisms and their personality begin to change and take on the mannerisms and personality of that dark entity. Their speech will begin to change, always for the worst. How they dress, how they groom themselves. Many times they begin to get into things like cutting or you know, extreme tattoos, body modifications. All right, I'm, I'm not trying to go to tattoos tonight, but I'm telling you, this is an indicator. When someone is doing extreme harm to their body, that's not God. There is an evil spirit driving them towards that. All right, Romans 6, 16 says, Know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Okay, so don't, don't be deceived. If you are obeying sin, you are a servant of sin, and you are a servant of a demon or multiple demons. Okay, these evil spirits do not serve you. Okay, you will not be able to summon and command them, okay? They may let you think that for a while in the beginning. They may let you think that you're in charge, but they are the tormentors, and you are their slave if you have yielded your authority over to them, okay? It is not the other way around. Our true authority over demons is only through the blood of Jesus. So the goal of the demon is to set up a stronghold inside of the person so that that demon is in as much control of the person as possible. Now, usually the person has only yielded a portion of control to the evil spirit until over time, as that thing begins to grow and gain power, eventually that person loses control and becomes completely demonized. But that demon tries to set up a place in the person, what we call a stronghold, so that they can be protected from being removed. They worked very hard to get into that body, and they do not want to give up that place. So for the successful, long-term deliverance of a person, we have to understand what that house is built out of and how it was built. How is that demon protecting itself from eviction? What does the enemy use to build the foundations and the walls? the ceilings of his demon house inside of you. All right, we know that sin in general is what opens the door to the enemy. The, sometimes the sin came from the fathers or from the ancestors of a person. Remember I said demons can follow along family lines. There are demons that will follow a line of, of a family and try to tempt the children and grandchildren 
and so forth down the line with the same sins that allowed the demon to access the family line in the beginning through the fathers, you, you know, fathers, grandfathers, right? Your ancestors. Okay, but that doesn't mean that you have to yield to it. All right, it may mean that because that thing is present in a family line, if you're not aware of these things, that temptation may come against you more than others. You may have a certain bent towards sin because this thing has followed down a family line. But that's why you need to be the one that breaks it off of the family line. Okay, you are, if Jesus is in you, the Holy Spirit is in you, you wield the blood of Jesus. You are the one that can break that off. You can be the redeemer for your family. You need to be the deliverer for your children and your grandchildren. Because if you sin, sin doesn't just affect you. If there's any pandemic in the earth, the pandemic is sin. We talked last week about how the enemy is a liar and that by getting you to believe his lies, he can gain access. Okay. And in deliverance ministry, we refer to these lies as ungodly belief systems. Sometimes we use just an acronym of UGB for ungodly beliefs. Okay, so it's not just that the enemy has told you a lie. It's that the enemy has told you a lie and you believe the lie. You have internalized that lie and that lie has become, to use a modern term, your truth. Okay, if there's any truth that's apart from God's truth, it is not the truth, it's a lie. So if you internalize the lie and that lie becomes your truth, in other words, that light that you think that's light, that darkness has become your light. And when that happens, how, how dark is the darkness? When you think that your darkness is actually light. Okay, but what happens then, you've internalized that lie, and then you begin acting on those lies as if they were truth. Okay, what this is, it's really a perversion of God's system of faith. Right. If you believe in your heart and you confess it with your mouth, that's how God's system of faith operates. But what happens when you really believe in your heart? A lie. And then what you speak from your mouth and how you act and live your life is rooted in that lie. That is a perversion of God's faith system, and it creates a stronghold for demons to stay in the person. So in deliverance, these ungodly belief systems have to be exposed and rooted out. All right, for instance, all right, let's say the enemy has been able to get into your finance, uh, finances and has you know, repeatedly caused you to suffer financial loss. It's kind of set up a pattern in life. All right, and maybe you know, that's happened over and over again because of some open door that you're not even aware of. Maybe you were brought up in a way you didn't believe certain scriptures. You don't believe the scripture says that the tither is shielded from the devourer. We talked about that already. So maybe you don't believe that. So you, you're not participating. And, you know, from that open door, the enemy's been able to attack you in finances. What happens is when you, when you encounter repeated things in life, you believe that's the way it is. So he'll begin to help you to believe a lie that every time I start to get ahead, Something happens and all my money gets taken away. All right, so that lie gets set up in your heart and you believe it, you speak it, and you live your life based on that lie. Well, the enemy was the one who set you up and was stealing your money in the first place. But now what he's done, he's set up inside of your soul, that, okay, your soul being your mind, your belief system, this ungodly belief system. And you really believe that it's inevitable that when money starts to come in, something will always come along and take it away. And that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay. That's just one small area. You multiply that times almost an infinite number of lies, and you can see how those ungodly beliefs open the door for strongholds. It's a perversion of faith. Okay, and so what you believe in your heart is what you confess with your mouth. Scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you want to know what people really believe, 
listen to what they say. And what you say is what you're going to get. That ungodly belief becomes a stronghold that the enemy hides behind. He has perverted God's faith system in you, and you now reap the harvest of that ungodly belief system. So in deliverance, you, you need, with the help of the Holy Spirit and with talking with the person, you need to be able to identify these ungodly beliefs. All right? And then they have to be displaced. The way that those beliefs have to be dealt with is by the Word of God. The ungodly beliefs have to be replaced with the truth, which is God's Word. To get the truth in you, it has to be consumed. It has to be eaten because it takes the truth to displace the lie. Now, this is basically what we talked about last week, right? We said the title was, It is the Truth That Makes Us Free. Okay, anywhere we've believed and internalized and you're operating in a lie, there's going to be a demonic bondage, a demonic stronghold. And the bad news is there, there's really not a quick fix for this. That didn't happen overnight. Okay, what it requires is a lifestyle change. That there are some things that only the Word can set us free from. It cannot be cast out. Okay, I, can, I can confront and cast out a lying spirit, but I cannot cast out the lie that you believe. That has to come from a renewed mind. That's Romans 12, 2. It says, don't be conformed to this world, but you be transformed, changed by the renewing of your mind. What's your mind? It's part of your soul that you may prove what is good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. The mind or the soul must be renewed and transformed by the washing of water by the Word. Friend, if you've never made Jesus your Savior and Lord, would you please do it today? You can't afford to put it off one more minute. Your eternal destiny depends on knowing Jesus. Whatever situation you may be in, Jesus can take your life and make something beautiful of it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except that he comes through me. And Romans 10, 9 tells us that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we shall be saved. So if you would like to know him, repeat this prayer with me today and really mean it from your heart. Say after me, Jesus, I choose this day to make you Lord of my life. I believe that you are the Son of God, sent to the earth to pay the price for my sin by your death. I believe that you were raised from the dead and that you are alive today in heaven. Please take my life and do something great with it. Friend, if you prayed that prayer with me today and you meant it, then today is your birthday. Today is the day that you were born again into eternal life. We suggest that you find a good Bible-believing local church where you can connect with other Christian believers and grow in the Lord. This message has been brought to you today free of charge by the friends and ministry partners of Renaissance Christian Fellowship. If you've been blessed by this ministry, would you please consider partnering with us to help send the gospel message to others around the world? For more information on how to donate to this ministry, please visit our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash RCF World, or you may send us an email at contact us at rcfworld.org. Again, that's contact us at rcfworld.org. You may give by debit or credit card directly at paypal.me forward slash RCF World. Again, that's paypal.me forward slash RCF World. Thank you for helping us to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world.